Hello everyone and welcome to Attachment Lesson 1. Now the attachment topic in psychology concerns itself with the bond between infants and their primary caregivers. Throughout this chapter we'll explore the research conducted by psychologists regarding the source, the nature, the development and the importance of this bond. This is what we need to know for this very first chapter. So we need to be able to outline and evaluate caregiver infant interactions in humans. So that specifically means we need to look at reciprocity and interactional synchrony, both of those being specific ways in which infants and caregivers interact with each other in order to form an attachment. So let's just start with a key definition for this chapter, attachment. So attachment is defined as an emotional tie or bond between two people, usually a primary caregiver and a child. The relationship is usually reciprocal, which means it's a two-way relationship that endures over time. Now that is a important definition to know, and that has come up as a two-mark question before in the past, so it would be a good definition to just kind of have in your mind. Attachments begin with the interactions between babies and their caregivers. Research has suggested that the responsiveness of the caregiver to the baby's signals has a profound effect on the quality of the attachment between the two. Babies have meaningful interactions with carers from the very start of their lives, and psychologists believe that these interactions have important functions for the child's social development, in particular, good quality early social interactions are associated with successful development of attachment between babies and their caregivers. The focus of this lesson is going to be on these meaningful interactions. Specif specifically, we're going to be looking at reciprocity and interactional synchrony. From birth, babies and their primary carers spend a lot of time engaged in interactions. Reciprocity is a turn-taking form of interaction where each person responds to the other and elicits a response from them. So, for example, a caregiver might respond to a baby smiling by saying something to them, and then that would in turn elicit a response from the baby, like another smile, or a laugh, or a giggle, or a coo, or just something. It is effectively a conversation, except for the fact that the baby can't really talk, but it doesn't matter because the interaction is still happening in a turn-taking basis and nobody's interrupting the other one, so it just goes backwards and forwards. Now, research into reciprocity has shown that babies have a periodic alert phase in which they signal that they're ready for interaction. So they might do that by making eye contact or by making a sound of some kind. And according to Feldman and Eidelman in 2007, mothers typically pick up and respond to their baby's alertness around two-thirds of the time. However, they do also say in their research that mother's ability to pick up and respond to their baby's alertness is also influenced by external factors such as the skill of the mother at being a parent and also something like stress, which tends to get in the way of everyday life if you're suffering with it. It even gets in the way of being a parent sometimes. Further research conducted by Feldman has also shown that the interactions between primary carer and infant tends to become more frequent around the age of three months, and it tends to involve both the mother and the baby paying close attention to one another's signals, whether they are verbal or whether they are facial expressions. Now, findings like this from research mark a very clear development in our understanding of how babies interact with their caregivers, because traditional views of childhood have generally portrayed babies as having a very passive role in that they receive care from an adult. But it seems that babies, as well as caregivers, actually have quite an active role. So research has found that both caregivers and babies can initiate interactions and actually appear to take turns in doing so, which has been described by Brazelton et al. as a dance, because it's just like couples dancing in that each person responds to the other person's moves. Our second form of caregiver-infant interaction is called interactional synchrony. 
Now, two people are said to be synchronized when they carry out the same action simultaneously. And the official definition of interactional synchrony is temporal coordination of micro-level social behavior, according to Feldman in 2007. Now, that is just a fancy way of saying that babies imitate their caregivers. Okay, so if you have a look at the pictures, you can see the man sticks his tongue out, the baby sticks his tongue out. The man opens his mouth, the baby opens his mouth. The man frowns, the baby frowns. It's imitation. Okay, so caregivers and babies interact in such a way that their actions and emotions mirror the other. Okay, and just to finish off our little bit of outline, we have some research studies into interactional synchrony. Now, there are two pieces of research that you should know for interactional synchrony. The first one was conducted by Meltsoff and Moore, and in this piece of research, they observed the beginnings of interactional synchrony in infants as young as two weeks old. In their study, they asked adults to display two of three facial expressions or gestures, and then they filmed and identified how the infants reacted to those expressions and gestures and they found that there was a positive correlation between adult behavior and infant response. So effectively, they found that the infants would imitate the adults. The second piece of research was conducted by Isabella et al. in 1989. And in this piece of research, the degree of synchrony in 30 infants and their mothers was assessed. They also assessed the quality of attachment between the mothers and the infants. And they found that high levels of interactional synchrony were associated with better quality attachments. Okay, so that piece of research actually shows that interactional synchrony is very important in developing good quality attachments. Now, both of these pieces of research are useful for different reasons. Um, if you ever get asked to outline a research study into interactional synchrony or into caregiver infant interactions, the Meltsoff and Moore study is probably the better way to go. Although, to be fair, neither of them are wrong, but the Isabella study will be quite useful in the evaluation section a little bit later on. So if it were me, I would use Meltsoff and Moore for my outline if I need it, and I would save Isabella for my evaluation section so that you've got something to fall back on. Okay, um, But we'll have a look at the evaluation section next, and then you'll see what I mean about how it can be used. So first off, we have a strength. Now, a big strength of this research is that more often than not, interactional synchrony and reciprocity is filmed in a lab setting. Okay, and that is great for loads of reasons. So for example, other activities that could distract a baby can be controlled. The observations can be recorded and analyzed a little bit later on, which means that it's unlikely that researchers are going to miss key behaviors because they can go back and they can watch it over and over again. More than one observer can record the data and establish the inter-rated reliability of observations. So that's also great because you can make sure that your observations are actually reliable. You're not just relying on one person to watch it at the time. The fact that it's recorded means that loads of people can watch it and make sure that it is actually reliable. And finally, babies don't know they're being observed. So their behaviors don't change in response to the observation. So there's no demand characteristics, which is usually a big problem for overt observations. But obviously, in this case, it doesn't really matter because the babies don't know, the babies don't care. They just get on with what they are usually doing. So because of all of that, the data collected in research like this should have good reliability because it should be consistent, and it also should have good validity as well, because extraneous variables are controlled and demand characteristics don't really exist. Okay, so that is your first strength. The next one is a weakness, and this one is all about the difficulties observing babies. Now, the issue is that it is hard to interpret babies' behavior, because let's be honest, they have a lack of coordination in general, and they're also fairly immobile as well. 
So the observations that people make are mainly of little hand movements or subtle changes in expression. It's hard to know what's going on. You don't know if the baby's smiling because something funny has just happened or because the smile means something or whether the baby's just pulling a funny face because he's farted. So the meaning behind all of the movements that are going on is very hard to establish. Um, it's also difficult to know what's going on from the baby's perspective as well, because they can't articulate anything and because they don't really do anything. So we can't be sure that the behaviours observed in caregiver-infant interactions have any special meaning. We assume that they have got special meaning, but we don't know for sure because of how hard it is to actually interpret the baby's behaviour. And a final limitation is the fact that observing a behavior doesn't tell us its developmental importance. So we don't really know whether what we're observing is actually important for the baby or not. Synchrony and reciprocity are effectively just names that have been given to patterns of behavior that have been observed in infants. They clearly exist. There's a whole wealth of research that shows that they exist. But knowing that they exist and being able to observe them isn't really very useful in helping us to understand development because we don't really know the purpose of the behavior. So with that, you have this issue that observational research alone can't tell us whether or not interactional synchrony and reciprocity are actually important for an infant's developments. However, this is a beautiful opportunity to use the research conducted by Isabella from earlier as a counterpoint you can then argue that Isabella found that there was a positive correlation between the quality of attachment between an infant and their mother and the amount of interactional synchrony that occurred. Okay, so you can throw in there straight away this counterpoint and say, however, on the other hand, Isabella et al. found that, and then you can outline that research, and then you can immediately evaluate your own evaluation point. Okay, so that'll add a nice little bit of depth to this particular point, which will show the examiner that you kind of understand what's going on and that you know what you're doing. Okay, so make sure you use Isabella there. And that makes a fourth evaluation point, which means you should have a nice, chunky, detailed evaluation section. So before we finish off, I've just got a couple of exam questions for you. Now it goes without saying that this can be tested in all kinds of different ways. You can get your standard bread and butter short answer questions like outline what is meant by reciprocity, outline what is meant by attachment, evaluate research into caregiver infant interactions, all that kind of stuff. The two that I've picked out for you though are a little bit different. So the first one is an application question. So with reference to the conversation, outline two features of caregiver infant interaction. And in this, you've got to pick out reciprocity and interactional synchrony. So in the second sentence, you've got interactional synchrony because Aisha moves her head perfectly in time with Tasneem. And then in the first one, you could reference reciprocity because they were interacting with each other. The second question is a sneaky evaluation point. Okay, so for this one, explain one reason why it's difficult to draw conclusions about the role of caregiver infant interactions. This is a question where you need to draw on your knowledge of the weaknesses of this research. So you could fall back onto the difficulties observing babies, or you could fall back on the issue of developmental importance. Okay, either way is fine, but don't trip up over the fact that it's a hidden evaluation point. Okay, all the other questions that um, you could get are generally your short answer questions that I mentioned before, but every now and again, you'll get something like this where you just need to think a little bit before you start writing. Okay, also watch out, this could come up as research methods questions as well, um, but as a general rule, they're usually okay. All right, so that is the end of the video. Um, I hope it's made sense for your first attachment lesson and I hope it's been useful. If you've got any questions, please feel free to throw them into the comment section below and I will do my best to get back to you ASAP. Thank you very much for listening and I'll see you in the next one. Thank you.